Here's 22 tips you need to know before you play Madden 22. Number one on the list, we're gonna start with something simple as we move towards more advanced things. You don't wanna hold down the sprint or acceleration button too much too early in a play. This is the RT or R2 button depending on your controller. Whether you're on the old systems or the new systems, this applies, but even more so on the new systems just because of the way the movement has changed. You never wanna hold down this sprint button until you are in the open field and ready to break away from the defense. Whether you're running the ball up the middle, running it on the outside, or even catching the ball you don't want to hold down this sprint button when you try to change direction and turn up field because if you do you will not be able to turn up field with good precision and it'll just put you in a bad situation try to stay off this button until you are in the open field and ready to break away Number two, the spin move is the best move in Madden 22. This goes for both the old systems and the new systems, but once again, I think this is even a little bit better on the new systems just because of the way the new movement system is. The jukes don't seem to work nearly as good this year unless you have a running back with a juking ability that gives him faster jukes. Otherwise, across the board, the spin move is going to work for any wide receiver, any running back, and even the quarterback. What you want to do is you want to hold the B or circle button, and then you want to also hold the left joystick into the direction you want to spin. So if you're on the right and you're trying to spin to the left, you would hold the B or circle button and hold the left joystick to the left. You're going to get a nice quick spin animation and it's going to fake out defenders more than any other move in the game. Number three, here are the best regs teams in the game. If you like playing online regular head to head, you want to use some of the best teams to give yourself the best chance to win. The Bills are a great team this year. They have a quarterback with good abilities. They have a good receiving core. They have a fast offense and they have a pretty good defense. You also want to look at a team like the Packers that have the best wide receiver and quarterback combo in the game. Aaron Aaron Rodgers has the best release in the game. They have good speed on defense and good pass rushers as well. The Chiefs, of course, are loaded. They have speed everywhere. They got a dominant offense. And on defense, they're just good enough to get the job done. And a really great sleeper team are the Arizona Cardinals. Kyler Murray has some great abilities this year. On offense, they have good receivers and they have a ton of speed. On defense, they have two pass rushers with pass rushing abilities, which makes them really tough to go against. Number four, here are the best playbooks in the game this year on offense. Now, I did an entire video just dedicated on this where I broke down even more playbooks, so I'll drop that below in the pinned comment if you want to check that out. But just to give you a few quick ones right here, if you don't want to watch that video, check out the Bills playbook, check out the Raiders playbook, and the Patriots playbook. Really quickly, if you're enjoying this video and getting value out of it and you want to stay up to date on all the top Madden tips all year long, consider subscribing and turning the bell icon on so you don't miss any of these future videos. More than half of you that watch the videos aren't subscribed, so you could be missing out on a ton of good videos in the future. Number five, here are the best abilities you want to be aware of in Madden 22. Now, if you're playing regs, you want to find teams that have these abilities. If you're an ultimate team player, you're going to want to acquire these abilities on your players. For quarterbacks, you want to look at the gunslinger ability, which four QBs on the regular roster has these. An ultimate team, you can find different QBs to equip this ability to. What this does is give you faster throwing animations, more velocity, and you can fit the ball into tighter windows. If you can't get that, you can also look at set feet lead, which is kind of the second best thing to this and also of course escape artist is really good for getting outside of the pocket and making it tough on the defense for running backs you want to look at any ability that helps them with ball carry moves whether it be bruiser which gives you better truck animations whether it be jukebox which gives you better jukes or spin cycle that gives you better spins for wide receivers you typically want to look at guys that can get route technician because they're just going to run their routes a little bit more crisp they're going to leave defenders in their dust more often and on defense, the main thing you want to look for are pass rushing abilities. Defensive ends or outside linebackers that can get things like edge threat, for example, they're going to shed blocks and get to the QB much faster. Number six on the list is the best defensive formation. Now, granted, defense is a little tough this year on next gen. On current gen, it's about the same as it was last year, but this formation is the most balanced across the board, and it'll work on both console generations, and that is the nickel 335 wide. I'll pop up on the screen right now every playbook that you can find this defensive formation in. I'm also doing a complete breakdown on this formation, which I will link below in the pinned comment later today. If you're watching this video after the first day, it'll already be down there, but basically this formation is really good at stopping the run and the pass. It's a good base formation. It's got all the coverages you want. It's got good blitzes, so this is a good formation to experiment with this year but if you want a full breakdown later today I will have that on this channel and it'll be linked below. Number seven on the list is be careful with zone coverage at the beginning of the year. Now on the older consoles I don't think it's as much of a problem it's more of a new console problem but right now zone coverage is not playing the greatest specifically cover two you want to stay away from cover two until it gets more of a patch or an update I'm sure after a month or two they're going to make tweaks and adjustments here but cover two is very risky right now cover three can also 
be risky, so be careful with it. If you're a zone defense guy, you might want to look at doing more cover fours as a base defense to start the year. And of course, you can use man defense as well. Number eight, use your coaching adjustments. Now, to get to your coaching adjustments, if you're on the old consoles, you can see the screenshot right here. If you're at the main screen, you can see your coach adjustments. You just want to click that tab. If you're on the new consoles, you want to click down the R3 button, which is the right joystick to bring up your coach adjustments. Now, on defense, the main things you want to really worry about this year is ball and air defense because they have reduced two man catch animations, which means it's going to be a little harder for defensive backs to get picks than it was in years past. So, something you might want to do is set this to SWAT ball so that the AI will attempt more SWATs and you'll have a much better chance at incomplete passes this way. You can also look at things like cornerback matchups if you want to match them up by overall or by speed or by height or by route running. This is always a really good thing to use in the game so that you don't have speed mismatches on the field. Another important one on the defensive side of the ball is option defense. You always want to set this to conservative because if players are using read options with players like Lamar Jackson, he's going to get breakaway touchdowns on the outside all day if you're not setting your defense to conservative. This is what you want to do every time. Now on the offensive side of the ball, I don't typically mess with my coaching adjustments too much. The main one I do use though is the ball carrier. You want to set this to conservative if you don't want to fumble as much. Keep in mind when you set it to conservative, you won't be able to fake out defenders with ball carry moves, but sometimes ensuring that you don't fumble the ball is the biggest thing. You don't want to turn the ball over and especially late in the game if you have a win and you're just trying to ice the game out, always set that to conservative. You don't want to give up fumbles. Number nine on the list is set your zone drop adjustments. Now this is inside your coaching adjustments, but I wanted to make it its own separate tip because of how important it is. Typically what you want to do here is you want to go to your curl flats and you want to set them from 20 to 25 yards. This is good for when you're running like a cover three or a cover four, for example. It means that those curl flat zones or the purple zones on the field will drop 20 to 25 yards back and it'll do a much better job at helping you take away those corner routes on the sidelines or the deep crossers that are always tough to defend. Another one you want to look at is your regular flats. If you're going to call a cover two or if you're going to put your flat zones, your light blue zones on the field, setting these to zero and five yards helps them play in the flat more aggressively instead of kind of drifting back to that 10 yard range and this will help you pick off a lot of things like flat passes or even drag routes. Number 10 on the list, do not rush only two pass rushers this year. This was a big tactic last year where people would drop nine back in coverage and only rush two guys and they would actually get pretty decent pressure. Well this year EA brought back the pancake rules which states if you only rush two or fewer defenders and your opponent runs the ball, your entire defense will get pancaked. But I've noticed even in some formations if you rush three, it still happens as well. So I think what they're trying to do is incentivize rushing four people on every play which is kind of more of the standard in the NFL. So just be mindful, never rush only two players this year and be careful if you're only rushing three. Rushing four is definitely the best way to generate pressure as well as I've also noticed rushing two to three guys does not generate near the pressure that it has in the past couple years. But when you add that fourth rusher, you're going to notice more block sheds and you're going to get to the QB quicker. Number 11 on the list, you want a user a safety on defense. This has been a thing for a few years. It's still a thing this year. You always want to try to use her a safety over a linebacker whenever you can for a few simple reasons. They're usually faster, they can change direction better, and they usually get better animations at playing the ball in the air. But specifically with the change of direction, you want to go into the ratings menu and actually look at the change of direction rating for the players on your team. The higher a player's change of direction, the quicker they can stop on a dime and change direction, which is crucial when you're usering on defense. Number 12, QBs are fast again. What do I mean by this? Well, for the past couple of years, since abilities got introduced to the game, only QBs that had escape artists really felt fast and really felt like they could scramble. Even if a QB had high speed, if he didn't have escape artists, he felt really slow. Well, they finally have done away with that and now speedy QBs actually feel fast even without escape artists. So be mindful of that. If you've got a guy that's like 84 plus speed at the QB position, he's going to move this year. You'll be able to get out of the pocket you'll be able to get a lot of yards on the ground scrambling with those guys once again number 13 how to stop those fast qbs now that all qbs are fast again it's even more crucial to know how to stop them and the best way i find is by using qb spies you want to take a fast linebacker or a fast defensive end and put them in a qb spy you can do this by getting on that player pressing the a or x button and then pressing left on the right joystick that's going to give you a qb spy he'll then follow that qb around and not let him scramble for easy yards qb contains do not work very well right now this year so I don't recommend using them because it's just not going to be beneficial for you more times than not. 
Number 14, wide receivers win more one-on-one -on -one catches this year. This is another change they made. They reduced two-man animations a lot between wide receivers and DBs. So when you have a one-on-one -on -one and you have a tall receiver, if you click on him and you hold the catch button, you can go up and aggressive catch the ball more successfully this year. So that's something you might want to take advantage of. There's still always going to be risk in throwing a 50-50 ball because he could drop it. The DB could make a better play, but you have a better chance at winning them this year. So if you've got a big stud on the outside, like a DK Metcalf, you might want to keep that option there to go one-on-one -on -one and try to bail yourself out if everything else on the play is covered. Number 15, you want to go for swats over interceptions this year. Now, this is the follow-up to the last tip where the wide receivers win the one-on-ones more often. Because of this, now when you click onto a DB, you have a better chance at having an incomplete pass by swatting than going for an interception. In the past, you actually had a much higher chance at getting interceptions on these one-on-ones. Now, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but the SWAT is going to come in and be more beneficial to you now. So I encourage you to go for the SWAT over the interception this year. Number 16 on the list. Momentum is a new feature this year on the new consoles and you need to be aware of it. What you want to make sure you're doing to keep momentum in your favor is not making too many mistakes. And I know that sounds pretty easy, but it is something that affects the game a lot this year. You want to make sure you're constantly getting positive yards. Obviously getting things like touchdown sacks and turnovers are going to swing your momentum even further. But every time you have a bad play now, that momentum is going to swing a little bit further in your opponent's direction and if it swings too much he's going to unlock certain abilities each game that are random and it's going to make it harder on you so you want to be even more careful this year make sure you're not making as many mistakes make sure you're keeping the ball ahead of the chain so that momentum is at least balanced or in your favor for the majority of the game number 17 to go along with this home field advantage is another feature for the new consoles this year which means every home team is going to automatically start with an advantage in their favor this plays off the momentum so so if you are the away team, you want to be even more sure that you're not making any mistakes to begin the game. You want to open up the game, your first drive. You want it to be your best drive of the game because if it is, you can take that home field advantage away by swinging the momentum just a little bit. And now it's more of like a neutral field game at that point and they don't have anything in their favor. But if you make too many mistakes, their momentum is going to shoot up. And at that point, it's going to be very hard to get it back. Number 18, pre-game and halftime adjustments. This is another next-gen exclusive feature. Basically, before the game, you can set your pre-game adjustments of how you want to play offense and defense. Do you want to focus on running the ball on offense or throwing it medium or throwing it deep and vice versa on defense? Do you want to focus on stopping the run or stopping the short pass or stopping the deep pass? And you'll notice when you scroll through these options, whichever one you select, it'll give you some benefits in some areas, but it'll also give you some negatives in some areas. So make sure you're careful which ones you're selecting because while you will get some some benefits it could be affecting you worse in another area and it's not worth it now at halftime you're going to get a chance to change this so if whatever you picked isn't working for you you can do the halftime adjustment and switch it out number 19 deep crossing routes are still just as good as ever and i know a lot of people hate that these are so powerful every year but i can't let this video go any further without letting you know how good they still are so if you're looking to move the ball on offense whether you're on the old systems or the new systems try using plays that have those deep crossing routes in them because they're so powerful powerful because of the fact that against man defense if you have a good route runner they're going to cook their man a lot of times and against zones they cut across the entire field which means no matter what zone is out there there's likely going to be an open window at some point of the play as long as your pass protection holds up number 20 how to disguise your defense this is something a lot of people still don't know about so i'm going to clue you in on it when you're on defense you can press the wire triangle button and then right on the left stick this is going to base align your defense which is basically going to center them up it's going to give you a too high safety look every Every play so your opponent will not know if you're in a cover two or if you're in a cover three or if you're in a cover four he'll have to guess every play because the look will be the same every play now you can also go into your coaching adjustments that we talked about earlier and you can set your alignment to base so that they just do this automatically every play if you want to as well number 21 how to trade for superstars in franchise mode i wanted to throw something in there for the franchise mode people if they didn't know how to do this so a lot of the cpu teams in franchise mode they're going to always value those high draft picks so you can always use that to your advantage to get studs on your team but here's another trick you can acquire those high draft picks easier by looking at what teams need so you can go to one team and see maybe they need a tight end really badly or a wide receiver or a running back and maybe on your team you have a guy lower on the depth chart that's like high 70s to mid 80s but he's not a desperate need for your team you can take that guy package him with some lower draft picks and then get a first round draft pick from that team that needs that player now the more you acquire those high draft picks you can then take those and then acquire other studs in the league and put them on your team 
Number 22, you can save your favorite plays in your playbook so you don't have to scroll through your playbook every time anymore. This is exclusive to the playbook system on the new consoles, but basically, if you look at a play that you like, and let's say that play is the X button on your screen, you can double tap the X button, and then you go over to your favorite plays tab, and all of the plays that you favorited will be there so you can just access them much easier and much quicker. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next time.